Psychologists generally define forgiveness as a conscious, deliberate decision to release feelings of resentment or vengeance toward a person or group who has harmed you, regardless of whether they actually deserve your forgiveness. Matthew 6.12 says, And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. Verse 15, but if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Experts make it clear that when you forgive, you do not gloss over or deny the seriousness of an offense against you. Forgiveness does not mean forgetting, nor does it mean condoning or excusing offenses. Forgiveness brings the forgiver peace of mind and frees him or her from corrosive anger. It requires positive feelings toward the offender, letting go of deeply held negative feelings. Forgiveness empowers you to recognize the pain you suffered without letting that pain define you, thereby enabling you to heal and move on with your life. Why do you need to forgive? First, we are all sinners. Romans 3.23 Beloved, you must acknowledge the fact that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We can see here that we are all sinners, and the only way to come to redemption is through the grace of Christ. Genesis 8.21 When the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma, he said in his heart, Never again will I curse the ground because of man, even though every inclination of his heart is evil from his youth, and never again will I destroy all living creatures as I have done. The Almighty God himself forgave mankind, therefore, people of God, forgive and let go. Let there be peace, let there be joy among you and your neighbors, your colleagues and your family. Forgive, and the Lord will bless you. Secondly, we need to forgive because Christ died for our sins. 1 John 2, 1 My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ the righteous. Verse 2 and he himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for those of the whole world. John says that Christ's death on the cross was a payment not only for them, but for the whole world, meaning for all kinds of men, i.e. Jew and Gentile, in all places and throughout all history. Jesus died for the sins of humanity, not just to save the Jews of the first century, but for the salvation of mankind, for your salvation. Brethren, forgive because Christ died for our sins. He said on the cross that it is finished, therefore all sins and grudges must be forgiven. Number 3. It is a prerequisite to also receive forgiveness. To whosoever who wants to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, genuine repentance must be the first step to be taken to reconcile with God. As the scripture says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 And for every repentance, there can't be restoration unless we have received true forgiveness from the Lord. No wonder the Bible says, Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. Matthew 6, 12 No one has the right to ask for the forgiveness of his sins if he has not forgiven the wrongs of other people. Such prayers are useless and will not be attended to. Matthew 6, 15 clearly states this, But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Our ability to forgive others determines how much forgiveness we will get in return. God wants us to forgive others genuinely so that we might receive forgiveness too. The Benefit of Forgiveness 
One major mark of people who will make a maximum impact in life, live a godly and peaceful life, is the ability to forgive wrongs and move on in life. Revenge and resentment will chase the Spirit of God. Therefore, you must be ready and willing to forgive other people's sins or offenses toward you. Jesus said, If you pray, forgive. Mark 11.25 Verse 26. Jesus said that if you are not willing to forgive others, you are not entitled to forgiveness by God. Beloved, the virtues of leniency and forgiveness, if missing in your life, may deny you your God-given destiny, and it may also deny you eternity. The first benefit of forgiveness brings joy and peace of mind. The youngest of the two sons in the parable of the prodigal son demands his share of his father's estate which the father gives him. Shortly after being given his inheritance, he runs off and squanders the wealth in wild living. Therefore, he finds himself destitute and in the midst of a severe famine in the land, he hires himself out to a pig farmer. Seeing firsthand that the pigs were eating better than him, he decided to return to his father and begged to be allowed to serve as a hired servant on the estate. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. This is forgiveness. The father has forgiven him with joy. He embraced him regardless of the gravity of the offense. Understanding that we ourselves were saved by grace will enable us to forgive freely without holding back any hurt. For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works that no one can boast. Ephesians 2, 8-9 Beloved, Christ loves us. Let us also extend this arm of love towards others by forgiving them their wrongs. We do not deserve his forgiveness, but because of his grace and mercy, we receive it. And we should attempt to be Christ-like in all our ways, which includes forgiving others. Genuine forgiveness brings up joy and peace of mind. Forgiveness also brings about redemption. Psalm 103, 12. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Ephesians 1 7 In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace. Jesus gives us the perfect example of forgiveness while in agony on the cross. Jesus called out, exclaiming, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Luke 23, 34. Imagine having that level of forgiveness, despite all the wrongs they had done to him. He was put on the cross, despite not committing any real crime. Yet in that moment, he still cried out to the Father, pleading for their forgiveness, for our forgiveness. We must forgive without limitation. Matthew 18, 21-22. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. Matthew 6, 14-15 For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Is there anyone who has wronged you and you are bitter against? Quickly forgive them and tell them so. Forgiveness redeems love in our relationship with God and man. But unforgiveness fosters hatred and it's one of the symptoms of pride and pride ruins destinies. So be careful. Forgiveness is not an easy thing. It does not come naturally to us, so we must pray about it. Lord, I pray for grace to forgive all those who have offended me. Come upon me. 
I forgive anyone that has hurt me in Jesus' name. Help me, Lord, to release my heart from keeping grudges against my neighbor. I command peace and joy into my life in the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs>